Hello, I'm Anna Green, an analyst focused on RegTech at Opimus, a capital markets research and consulting firm. In this presentation, we'll investigate the current state of trade and communication surveillance for the detection of market manipulation and unwanted trading activities. While I plan to jog through the major points relevant to the space, please look for our upcoming trade and communication surveillance report at opimus.com. In this report, we include profiles and rankings of the many trade surveillance offerings available in the market. We share case studies detailing the configuration of the surveillance efforts of several market participants. And we make a more thorough study of the topics introduced in this video. If you have any questions, please do reach out to me directly at my email, ag at opimus.com. In order, we'll spend this video talking through the regulatory landscape for trade and related communication surveillance, as well as recent fines that have been issued, the evolution of surveillance approaches firms are currently undertaking, as well as the advancing alerting capabilities of offerings available. And we'll finish by discussing the direction in which we expect headcount and IT spend in trade and communication surveillance to go in the next five years. Onto the regulatory landscape. Trade surveillance is becoming increasingly important as regulators around the world want to protect investors and markets from market manipulation and unwanted trading activities. While European regulations tend to be more rigid than those elsewhere in the world, the trend has been to crank up requirements for surveillance, archiving, and required analysis of all trade data and all related communications everywhere. Anyone concerned with compliance in this space will closely familiarize themselves with Dodd-Frank, MAD, MAR, MIFID II, and depending on regulatory obligations, potentially the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Ordinance, the Singapore Market Misconduct Regime, or Indonesia Law No. 8. Certain defined scenarios are considered unacceptable and finable market manipulations across most regimes insider trading, manipulating prices, making false misleading statements, really any action aiming to defraud, including spoofing, layering, and marking the close, just to name a few. In Europe, folks mostly think of MAD and MAR when they think of market manipulation regulations. They should also be aware, however, that MIFID II makes additional requirements. They demand the capture of all trade data, including when the order is placed, executed, modified, canceled, and any indication of interest. It also requires that firms be able to reconstruct this data accompanied by all related communications, documents, and meeting notes at the behest of the regula regulator or the client. These records must be stored in an unalterable manner for up to seven years. MIFID II also demands the monitoring of this data for best execution and sufficient monitoring for market misconduct. As such, it is entirely possible we'll see MIFID II cited in fines levied for future market misconduct. This chart shows the staggering fines that have been imposed on financial institutions by regulators around the world in response to market manipulation. 2015 represented the high point, with the total fines reaching almost 9 billion US dollars. 2015 was also notable because of the high-profile cases that involved the manipulation of a number of markets, including foreign exchange, LIBOR, and Euribor. Many of the largest financial institutions were involved in these schemes, including UBS, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Deutsche Bank, Barclays, and Royal Bank of Scotland. In 2016, after a truly horrible year for market abuse fines, there was an abrupt slowdown. 2017 so far has continued this trend. It would be tempting to conclude that financial institutions have been able to get their books in order and regulators are less concerned with market manipulation than before, but that would be a mistake. New regulations like MIFID II will provide an additional framework for fines to be levied in the European Union, with the potential to increasingly ensnare buy-side firms as well. Now let's take a look at current approaches to surveillance. To anyone working in surveillance, in surveillance, it will come as no surprise that even some of the most prestigious market participants employ a largely siloed and manual process to different parts of the surveillance cycle. In this chart, you see 
the different forms of electronic communications, voice communications, order management systems, exchange order books, external news feeds, and more that all need to be collated or recorded, archived, analyzed, and then investigated in an audible case management system. This is not a straightforward task, and many market participants employ over a dozen vendors as well as large teams of employees to address these requirements. On the communication side, for example, it has been a pretty standard practice to spot check phone calls for inappropriate behavior. Obviously, there are major issues with this approach. In response to trade monitoring, in respect to trade monitoring, there are also many market participants who use several different vendors depending on the particular offering strength analyzing a particular asset class or just what was required by the regulator at the time. Using the same models for equities and fixed income, for instance, would be a recipe for an ungodly amount of false positives. This brings us to a very common complaint we hear amongst our clients that they receive so many alerts of potentially bad behavior that it becomes white noise. A compliance team getting too many alerts, especially false alerts, can be just as bad as them not getting any. To try to get around this, it has been quite common for a market participant to have one trade surveillance solution analyzing and producing alerts for listed products, for instance, an entirely separate solution addressing and creating alerts for unlisted products. Especially with MAD and MAR and now MIFID II, regulations and staggering fines have increased pressure on market participants to get a tighter grip on their approaches to monitoring communications and trade activity. To shift from the current reactive model of inv investigating alerts in different silos following a potential, a potential misbehavior to a more preventative approach that identifies risk factors holistically across communication channels and for cross-asset class trading activity. A common wish of our clients is that a holistic solution would also enable seamless and quick trade reconstruction for MIFID II and Dodd-Frank requirements but also just for daily investigative use by compliance teams. Comfort is also increasing for financial institutions to run surveillance over the cloud versus on-premise. Nice Actimize, Bloomberg, and Nasdaq Smarts are some of the heavy hitters who have made significant investments to offer a more holistic solution and often highlight their use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and behavioral analytics for preventative holistic alert generation in the process. NASDAQ Smart's trade surveillance, for instance, has an interesting partnership with digital reasoning synthesis solution for a behavioral analytics approach to communications data, and has also acquired Cybernetics, a firm specializing in analyzed, analyzing individual traders' behavior over the life cycle of their investments. Artificial intelligence and behavioral analytics are definitely the buzzwords of the season in surveillance. The use of more advanced analytics and artificial intelligence promises to allow firms to reduce the number of false alerts while minimizing the risk that actual instances of market manipulation go undetected. It must be stressed that the use of AI remains quite limited, with the vast majority of market participants not making use of any sort of AI in their surveillance systems. Currently, the bulk of trade surveillance relies on fairly simple and static rules. For example, when, a, when trying to de detect insider trading, a rules-based approach may look for trades made shortly before price movement in the stock of more than 10%. In communication surveillance, simple alerts rely on little more than keyword searches. An intelligent alert, on the other hand, would take into account the volatility of the stock rather than simply putting a 10% threshold into place. For some stocks, a 10% price movement may be commonplace, while for others it will be rare and definitely worth investigating. The intelligent alert you see in the chart would look at trades made before price movement of more than three standard de deviations from the mean. The intelligent alert therefore eliminates a significant number of false alerts for stocks where large price movements are common. Intelligent alerts are not artificial intelligence, although they can rely on fairly sophisticated statistical techniques which allow a significant reduction in false positives, while not 
allowing actual market manipulations to slip by undetected. Trading Hub and Trilliums are, Trillium are both examples of vendors using this approach. While we do expect the use of artificial intelligence to increase an alert generation for both trade and communication surveillance, by 2022 we expect about half of market participants to have at least shifted from threshold-based alerts to intelligent alerts. As you'll see here, there's also interesting activity happening under the, the broader banner of artificial intelligence and behavioral analytics. With trade surveillance firm Norensic employing K-means clustering and Scylla, another trade surveillance tool, currently beta testing the use of support vector machines, another supervised learning approach. Cybernetics, digital reasoning, and Behavox are all firms who have advertised their use of behavioral analytics as different differentiators, taking into account the individual trader or portfolio manager's typical trading pattern, such as size of positions, whether they typically trade the instrument in question, how much capital they typically use, and how long they hold positions for. The key is to identify abnormalities to avoid false positives. On the communications front, behavioral analytics assesses who traders are talking to, what they're talking about, and categorize communications based on factors such as business criticalness and closeness and based on vo the vocabulary used. Some vendors have the ability to determine emotions displayed on the calls, such as laughter. Firms like Catalyst and Behavox also are able to map and score the strength and riskiness of traders' relationships, enabling compliance teams' investigations to be allocated more efficiently. This combination of approaches is far more sophisticated than the keyword searches that are so prevalent currently in communications monitoring, and far less costly than the random spot checking previously mentioned. As we expect the adoption of more precise and preventative alerting methods to rise, we anticipate headcount on surveillance teams to decrease starting in 2019, following the implementation of MIFID II. Reduction in headcount covering trade and communication surveillance does not, however, mean that costs will go down. In fact, we expect spending in, te in technology for surveillance to rise up to 1.4 um, US dollars billion, 1.4 billion US dollars as firms try to replace these people, people intensive solutions with automated solutions that employ varying degrees of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and behavioral analytics. In conclusion, we expect that there will be continued pressure from regulators regarding market manipulation in coming years. However, we are less likely to see some of the headline grabbing fines in the hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars coming out of the US. Rather, we expect more regulators around the world to look at a broader range of players with more fines, but at smaller levels. Still, the pressure on financial institutions to address market manipulation is not about to recede. We also expect to find market participants continuing to look for more efficiencies on their own compliance team by adopting more advanced alerting capabilities, be it via artificial intelligence or behavioral analytics. While transitioning to more holistic trade and communication surveillance solutions has a broad appeal, it will be a complicated solution away from the current very siloed approach. While established players like Nice Actimize, Nasdaq Smarts, Bloomberg, and BNext have a solid client base, the surveillance space has been flooded with newcomers. With, but with Ancoa folding under Sonober earlier this year and cybernetics getting picked up by NASDAQ, we expect to see this market continue to shake out over the next 12 to 24 months. Finally, we will, we will see more surveillance vendors trying to deliver an ROI on their tool that goes beyond helping their clients avoid regulatory fines. We've already seen several vendors offer best execution analysis, analyze trader performance, and identify cross-selling opportunities. We expect to see much more of this. I hope you found this presentation to be informative and please do not hesitate, hesitate to reach out to me at ag at opimus.com with any questions or to learn more about the full report on this topic and about opimus. Thank you.